I've ended up hearing, hearing about this place called Tenerife, the Canary Islands. I made my way down there. It was paradise. It was beautiful beaches, beautiful women. And I walked down the beach and I got to the club area and I said, hey, you guys hire? And they said, yeah, you're hired on the spot. And Where is like, the Canary Islands? Where is that? Is that? Uh... It's off the coast of Morocco. Okay. So it. it's not in the Mediterranean. It's mm -hmm. <clears throat> it's basically like the Cancun of Europe. Okay. Yeah. So, you know, there was a lot of opportunity there. I ended up working at a club for a euro a person that I bring into the club. <laughs> so like my job was like, hey guys, if you all get a shot, I'll throw in this, blah, blah, blah. It was, it, they basically paid me in drinks. I got eight drinks when I worked, four drinks when I got off. <laughs> so three months of this, I was a full-blown alcoholic, man. Really rock bottom, man. I was homeless. I couldn't even afford a 30 euro a week to live in a room with eight other guys, cockroach infested. Like, it was bad. Like, I was sleeping <clears> on the beach. I was sleeping on the park bench. Um, but there was this American guy there that I knew. He was from Miami, and his dad was Colombian. He said, hey, gringo, we think you got a future, man. We don't want to see you living like this. Like, you got potential, blah, blah, blah. Come live with us. Three months with him, I just worked out. I got sober. Um, you know, they took me in like family. But then one day, the dad sat me down. He's like, hey, gringo, <laughs> you want to go make some real money? And I was like, yeah, I do. <laughs> so we started taking the trips down to Colombia, Venezuela, Aruba. And we were getting kilos of Coke. We were breaking it down, packaging it into packages and swallowing a kilo Oof. and flying back home. So about my fourth trip in on Colombia, um, some random black guy comes up to me in the airport. He says, Dami su pasaporte. And I'm like, uh, no kid prende, sir. Like, just try to act like a real tourist. Right. And he's like, secret police. And I'm like, oh, he's like, and he's looking at my passport. He's like, you like Colombia, huh? You come here a lot. I was like, yeah, I have a girlfriend here. He's like, yeah, sure, sit down. So it sits me down to a sketchy looking dude and a beautiful Colombian chick. And I look at him like, where are we? What's going on here? And they're like, the Equi rays, the X ray. Oh, ah, yeah. They told me in Spanish. So I am. And you're in Colombia right now. I'm in Colombia. Okay. And I didn't know at the time, but I'm looking at eight to 14 years mm. in Colombia with what I had. Oh, wow. They told me only three to five. And then they told me there's a special paper on it that the X ray doesn't pick up. I thought they were just saying that to BS me. So I'm freaking out, but I'm just trying not to panic right mm -hmm. now. I'm like, just play it cool, man. I'm the first one to go up. I go up, put my hands up. They took me to a big room in the Bogota airport. Mm -hmm. It's about a room this size, big room in the, this machine. And it was like a treadmill. And I walk out of this. I'm terrified. Yeah. And they say, Tiene buen día, senor highness. They said, have a good day, sir. And I signed and I fingerprint and I walked out of there and the adrenaline dump that I had <laughs> could compare to winning a UFC fight. Like, bro, I was like, like, I felt like I could jump 10 feet high and I was like trying not to like walk weird, but I would like, like sprint <laughs> and then walk weird. Like, like I was like, yeah, I mean, it was, it was a rush, bro. And then I got on the plane. And so, and I, so they didn't get you there. No, the paper worked. Wow, what was it? So you just put... It was like, it's like the metallic, you know, wrapping paper how it has the color and then on the other side, it's like that. It looks like snowflakes, but yeah. it's all like, it was that. Oh, you had it wrapped in the, the cocaine wrapped in that. So so you would you would compress it into 10 gram balls like this. Mm -hmm. And then you would put, we'd have surgical gloves and you would, you would, you would first do a plastic and then you put it in the surgical glove. We tie it, cut it turn it upside down, put it back in the surgical glove, four layers of the surgical glove. Mm -hmm. And then they would put um, the paper around it. And then you would take like like uh, silfame, like the real smooth plastic and put around it. And then you put it in like, with like yogurt and stuff and just. Wow. Like wake up like six to eight hours before your flight, before you had to leave, swallow four or five, walk around, swallow four or five, walk around. Until you get and and my buddy my the guy I was with he's like one more he's like he's like ten grand ten grand swallow two more and I used to be like so you'd you'd swallow as much as you could um, wow. yeah I mean it was and how much did you get per one um so the first time I went I was just like basically a mule mm -hmm. you know seven seven thousand euros mm -hmm. um, everything paid for for me it was like a free vacation plus I got paid. And then the Colombian guy's like, hey, man, you can work for yourself, but you have to bring this certain amount for me. So then I was making like, 
I mean, you spend a thousand dollars on a kilo and you sell it, you break it into two kilos, it's still good product. You sell it for seventy thousand euros. Um, so you're basically one thousand to a hundred thousand. Mm -hmm. And you would be able to get back a kilo ingesting it. Yeah. Wow. My lord. We'd each we'd each get close to a kilo. Just hoping that it wouldn't explode in your stomach too, because you'd be oh man, dead, of course. At that point. Yeah, and like one time I got deathly. It was like one of the first times. The first time was the scariest because they sent us to Cali, Colombia, mm -hmm. and the guy wasn't with us. It was just me and his son, and it was with like his girlfriend's brother. It was like sketchy dudes. I was in like the most get, like the most ghetto place in Cali, Colombia. Mm -hmm. like we were at the mall in Chippy Chapa in this casino, and and we were like, uh, yeah, we're in. Uh, this neighborhood and they're like no don't go there like it's crazy like it was like it was like dirt roads but like they loved me there they were like gringo like they like i was like the gringo huh. on the block and for some reason maybe that was it was because of people i was with mm -hmm. it was like dirt roads piles of trash homeless and then there'd be like the most beautiful girls walking around and then it would be like all these dudes hanging out and then all of a sudden they would just take off running and police would be chasing them down these alleys like it was just it was crazy. You'd hear gunshots. Um, it was crazy, but we didn't wrap our first, um, our first batch. Yeah, and I got deathly sick that time because like we went up into the jungle in Colombia, mm -hmm. and like I had like one of those sombreros on, yeah. and I asked this little kid, I was like, uh, "Where's the guerrilla?" And he's like, "Ahí," which is like the the guerrilla is like the like the cartel. Mm. So I asked him, I was like, where are they? And he's like, over there. And I was like, hmm. it's like, they see a white boy. Like, I, and like all the little kids would surround me because they never seen a white boy. Mm -hmm. And like, it was just, it was like a crazy experience. Right. After that, we kind of did it better where we wrapped our own stuff. I felt a lot better. Sure. But I came huh. back and I got deathly ill and I started like feeling like I was fainting. And I was like, this is it. I'm going to die. Yeah, like done. I thought I was just going to foam at the mouth and, and die. So. After the secret officer, secret police guy x-rayed us, mm -hmm. then I started to feel invincible. Yeah. So I'm like, what are they going to do? X-ray us? Yeah. Like I beat the x-ray. The paper works. Yeah. <clears throat> so we used to do three months, three months. Now I was doing one month, one month, oh, wow. one month. And, uh, you know, as fast as you make money, as fast as it goes. About 15 trips. Finally, I flew back to Tenerife. They took me in the room. They questioned me. Why do you come here so much? And it was very odd because I didn't have credit cards. I just had cash. Mm. And I was like, I'm a rich American. I have girlfriends. My parents, Western Union, me money. Mm -hmm. And they're like, that, you know, rich people don't use Western Union. Right. So they let me go. My girlfriend came in. That checked out. They let me go. We walked down. The Colombian guy was waiting in the parking garage for us like an idiot. He should have jumped on a taxi and got out of there. Boom. Drug task force jumped on us. Instead of taking us to the x-ray in the airport, because mm -hmm. they didn't have one, they took us to the hospital. Mm -hmm. And that was the real x-ray. Boom, you know, the plaque, don't move. And I was like, moving and stuff. Like, no, don't move. I'm like, I'm not. And, I'm like, <laughs> and then finally, they laid me down so I couldn't move. Mm. And they saw it. And it was like, they couldn't really see it, but they saw this little, and it was this beautiful Spanish girl. And she's like, and then and they're like, the the drug people, I was giving, I was like, my girlfriend's crying. I'm a tourist here to come spend money in your country. I was just being an asshole yeah. to them. And they're like, we're so sorry. We don't think, we didn't see anything they're looking. And the medical director's like, you have drugs in your intestines. What is it? Heroin, cocaine. She's screaming at me in Spanish. And I was like, nah. I was like, no, nope, it's not. No. She's like, it is. It's seguro. And I was like, nah, I had Chinese food. Because it looked like a little, like a little <laughs> circle. And they're like, yeah, shut up. Boom, handcuffs, hospital for three days, making me drink this X Lax. Wow. Yeah, it was it was bad because I felt really bad for the girl because she had nothing to do with it and mm -hmm. she was going to jail too. Oh man. But I said everything. I was like, she had nothing to do with it. She doesn't even know. They let her go. But yeah. her son like got left at school. Like it was it was a deal, man. It was a mess. So that's uh so that was in Colombia. You got arrested. Or is that when you when you got over to Europe. Spain, Spain, yeah, 